All right, construction cronies, here we are with another drywall video, guys. It's been a while since I've done a drywall video, actually a year. So um, this is on steel stud framing. So this is how to drywall on steel stud. Uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm checking my layout to make sure that the sheets will hook the door properly. I'm checking both ways and I'm finding the best layout. You always do that on your sheets. Here I'm, I'm drawing centers. I'm drawing 1632 on my sheets. That way I can set my studs at the top in the fields, right? And this is me using a knife. So basically the same technique, cutting and drawing. Just pay attention to that, those previous slides there. Here I am lifting up the sheets because what I'm doing is standing up all the full sheets before I start screwing them in. I don't care if there's a hundred, I'll still stand up all 100 before I start screwing them in. Okay, so I've got my check, my layout checked. I know where I'm going and I got all my sheets stood up with 16s drawn on them. The piece of wood you saw me just throw down there is just a half inch spacer. Always keep your sheets a half inch up off the floor. And sometimes you can use, we, most of the time we use like half inch drywall to do that. I just didn't have any 5.8. I'm using 5.8s here and I didn't have any half inch on site. So I'm using these uh, pieces of wood that are a half inch thick. The very first sheet on a, on a run, okay, you laser in with your line laser to make sure it's perfectly level. I'm going to screw it in on the bottoms, on the track. I'm going to screw this, this sheet completely 100% in so that all the other sheets that I just tack in next to it, okay, that one will not go anywhere. You want your first sheet to be uh, perfectly screwed in before you start uh, slamming sheets up into it, right? Because then the, the sheets going forward, you only have to put your screws in the bevels, okay? And I put my screws in every two feet in the bevels when I'm just doing the tack-in phase. Uh, I put four screws in the bottom track, uh, one inch in from the, each bevel, and then also one inch in uh, from the middle of the uh, studs. And you will see a close-ups of that near the end of the video. You'll see close-ups of how I put my screws. Pay attention to where I put my screws. Knee, waist, chest, reach. Okay? Knee, waist, chest, reach. Simple as that. Those are a little close together, but the, the bottom one could be a little bit lower. Uh, but anyways, the, the rule is knee, waist, chest height. I don't get creative with my screws. I put them in every single sheet the same way. I don't I don't change it up. <laughs> right? So and then two, be careful not to put any screws in close to the, the spacer either on the bottom until the spacer is out. Because if you put screws in close to that spacer on the bottom, when you try to take it out, it could rip the bottom of the sheet. And the, you don't want that. And, and, it, and it gets tough, especially when it's drywall spacer, okay? It could break in and just like kind of remain in the uh, behind the sheet type thing. Here I am, see, I'm tacking it in on the two foot. So when I am when I do my bevel screws in, I go every one foot. But while I'm tacking sheets in, I only mark every two feet, right where the cutouts are. I get two, four, six, eight, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I only tack them in um, when I'm doing my, uh, when I'm doing my full run. When all the sheets are on the wall, I'll come back and then I'll screw everything off on the, like every foot. can see even so on the the side too on the first side that I was doing I am only I'm not countersinking those screws because I'm screwing the hard side in first you always want to uh, countersink and screw in fully your soft side of the stud and then uh, your hard side so because of the the fact that that, that there is no sheet on the soft side yet I'm, I'm not countersinking those screws in the hard side right there what I'm doing is I'm banging in the bevel with my Olfa knife it popped out a little bit on the bevel so I'm just banging it back in with my Olfa knife so that it doesn't push the next sheet further out but yeah and make sure you guys yeah, check out where I'm putting make sure you guys pay attention to where I'm putting my screws here there, I put my screws in the same place. You see right there, one inch in side of the bevels and the studs, exactly like that. So I got four screws in the bottom track, and um, when you're doing a standard track, I will do the same thing on the top. But with slip track, you want to keep your screws like three inches down from the top of the, uh, the, the wall, okay, so that you have room for your three-quarter inch deflection. But basically, now that that, screw, that first sheet is level, secure it's not going anywhere I can start banging in sheets okay so it doesn't matter if there's three sheets next or uh, 20 sheets next it's the same thing I put my my spacer just on the inside of the 32 that way when I put my sheet on it just nicely falls into the level sheet there that I put in first so what I'm gonna do here is once I know the bevel is good I'm gonna screw it in at the two foots in the bevel See. That's the six foot. I'm gonna hit the four foot, the two foot. 
And then generally what I'll do is I'll jump to the track and do the far bevel. And then uh, I'll tack in the two, four, six on the main stud, okay? Uh, in, th in this situation, you don't want to go above knee, chest, waist in the field either until you uh, screw in your, um, your field studs on the center that you've drawn on your sheet. So you can see here, I'm, I, I typically skip all field studs until the very end. Uh, what I'll do here is I'm tacking in my bevel studs, okay, every two feet. And then I'll grab a ladder. You'll, he you'll see here in a second. I'm going to grab my ladder, and I'm going to go up, and I'll secure the, uh, the studs on centers. But, yeah, you got to take that, that riser out. you got to take that out before you screw in the bottoms. Otherwise, it'll get stuck in there, you know? If you guys have any questions at all, too, man, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments because I literally I'd get back to everybody, guys. Yeah, you can see right there, you see where the screws are? That's the only place you put screws ever. Guys, like, don't get creative with your screws. Just follow my advice. Put them in the same spot every time. And you can see here, I got the six-foot step out. I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to put the field studs on the lines that I drew on my sheets, 1632. I'm going to also uh, secure the, uh, the bevel stud there as well. Oh yeah, good times, man. Love drywall. It's uh, it's actually kind of fun, you know. I've been doing a lot of framing uh, this past year, not a lot of drywall, which is crazy. It's like you either do a whole bunch of drywall and not enough framing, but right now how we got it is we're doing the entire thing, guys. We're framing, uh, insulating, drywalling, taping, and, and doing the T-bar on these jobs. So you're going to see us start to finish these, these projects. I got like six restaurants on the go right now. And a, and a learning center. So we got a lot of jobs going right now. Uh, just joined uh, forces with uh, Murat, the Russian framer. The guy's an outstanding, uh, a really, really nice guy, man. Um, in a very, very talented framer. I'm so happy to have him on the team now. Guys, if you've seen my, my recent Jasper videos from Jasper Canada in the mountains and, and the uh, little in the subway that we have there in Devon, guys, man, he's uh, awesome. Okay, we got, we got so many jobs on the go right now, it's insane. But, yeah, so that's what I do. When I'm just tacking in the sheets and I'm standing them up, I'm just putting screws in every two feet in the bevel. And then when I go to screw off the whole wall, I'll screw up the field studs and the bevels, and I'll hit them at every one foot. So the first screws in the bevel even on uh, will be one foot up. And then the, the, the bottom screws, one foot below and one inch in from the bevel itself. So it'll be like, we'll say four and a half Four, four to four and a half inches in from the end of the sheet, okay? Because the bevel is three inches, so I'll go an inch in from that. So four inches in from either side on the bottom, okay? But that's it, dudes. Yeah, I'm not screwing in the field studs yet because I literally don't need to. The uh, They're secure on the top of the sheet, and so you got to make sure you do that because on the other side of the wall, we have to land our bevels on a different stud, okay? You can't land your bevels on the same side of the wall. They have to be staggered from side to side of the wall, right? So you, that's why you got to pay uh, special care to where your field studs are on, on the first side because if you don't, but when you get to doing your other side, they could be all screwed up, right? And if you noticed, we're using the phosphate. This is a six inch stud, light gauge, 25 gauge stud. Um, and also too, when you're up there uh, doing your, screwing off your tops, always measure your tops, okay? So uh, measure both sides of the sheet because they're, they might be a little bit different because they don't always land even, right? So it could be like a quarter inch to eighth inch different um, from, from like the same, like side by side. So sometimes they line up, which is great. You just use the same number. But check side to side always in case you need to angle cut them. There's usually always one way in a building you've got to angle cut things, okay? And that's, well, usually the back to front, not uh, to cross the middle, okay?
Yeah, that's why you don't put any screws in around that because it'll tighten up and bust out. And you want nice clean bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I try to when I'm screwing in my bottom track there. I try to use I try to use up the screws that I've uh, dropped to to do that with. But. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys learned something. And I'm telling you, man, if you guys have any questions, please leave me leave them down below. And there it is again. I'm, I'm beating in the, the bevel because it popped out a bit. And I'm just using the butt of my open knife with it. Yeah, man. Just think about the technique, right? Like, um, I use my shoulders uh, a lot to lift my sheets, and you got to keep your back straight. Your, you know, keep your knees and your heels and your and your shoulders kind of as square as possible all the time. Okay. And those drill hooks are are boss, man. The lugs are awesome, awesome drill hooks to, uh, uh, you know, to help you out, hands free type thing, right? So the drill's right there. You don't have to set it down type thing. I keep it loaded. And here we are, drawing centers again. You said to go forward, backward, don't matter, okay? Just, uh, it's about holding it strong, the tape square, and, uh, yeah, I got tons of videos on that stuff too, guys. But here we are, right? Boom, nice, nice, just falls into place, right? <laughs> And then this is because it's an opening. Uh, I'm going to, um, I'm literally actually going to, I'm going to tack it in here on the door stud. But ultimately when I, when I router out the top, I'm going to put a laser on the stud. This is no door here. It's just an opening. So I am going to use my line laser to make sure that it is perfectly straight, perfectly level and no, no issues. Okay. And that's for when I, when I cut the drywall. Okay. I'm going to make sure that the, that it's straight and use my line laser. And then you can see here, I'm going to put a buck and a leg in to finish that wall and uh, a full top so that the, the butt joint is straight. And all I got to do is tape one joint across there horizontally, right? forget to measure your tops right well while you're there measure your tops now that the wall is locked in like that too you can put your buck and your leg in before you screw off your bevels and your fields okay but at that point you're good to go on the other side there, I haven't even, even till, till to this day, I haven't finished the header on that one yet, but I will be going in tomorrow to this job to finish, and we'll be drywalling and putting in, putting in that header on the, uh, the right side here, but um, the left side is complete, and the reason why I'm doing this is I want to get this drywalled and taped, or at least fire taped up top, because I have bathroom walls and all that going on in front here, and I will not be able to access these this back wall when those are framed in. So you can see I use my router to cut out the top there. You can go behind and score it with your Ulfa knife so that there's a nice line for you to follow uh, with your router. And then basically, yeah, just back cut it, and uh, you'll see here uh, you, bet you fold it and, and uh, snap it off. And 
where I'm cutting right now. So I've only got a couple screws in there. And I don't know if it shows it in this video. because uh, So I want to tell you right now. So once I get that piece off, see, I only, I only have three screws in there. I'm going to put the laser on it. Make sure it's level. In this case, it was perfectly level already. So I didn't have to take those screws out or adjust anything. So the box beam is definitely strong. Uh, but then you want to go every eight inches there in the side and every one foot in the bevel. And like I'm saying, it's 16 inches in the field. So like knee, waist, height, and a reach. And then you go up and you, you do what you got to do, right? But in the field there, you just now I just got to jump in between. And see, there's the buck piece right there on the top, right? Without the leg in there. But uh, that's how it's done, right? Oh, the old man driving the lift. <laughs> right on, dude. So yeah, 5 eighths, I always score twice. Okay, and these are angle cuts. So I'm measuring side to side on those tops. And see that? These are all angle cuts. So I'm cutting them to the angle. And it's not because the sheets aren't level. It's because the roof is sloped. You want to make sure you leave uh, three quarters of an inch for deflection down below the deck with your sheets, okay? And you still want to draw your centers on them too. But yeah, get all your tops cut. I make a list. And um, I uh, I cut everything, so I'm in a I'm in a small spot here, so I just I'm just reading the the numbers from the wall I wrote down from side to side, but try to do everything uniform, guys. Like um, so, if you gotta do uh, measure up, right? Measure your top and bottom, draw your centers, and then if you gotta cut the end, tape cut, and then take out your T-square. So before you put your tape measure back in your pocket, make sure everything that you need to do with it is already done. Okay, see what I'm doing here? I just marked top and bottom. Now I'm drawing my centers, okay? If I had to actually cut the length, like the width of it, I would also do that at this point, okay? And then I would put my tape measure back in. I wouldn't snap it before I cut with the T-square, but it would already be cut, okay? But then here you go. Then you bring out the T-square, right? And it's, you know, you see how, I'm, see how I do it, right? I get everything done with that uh, with a tape measure done and everything with a knife done type of thing, right? Before I put my tools away. Okay, there's a, a just keep it a keep it a system, right? Just keep it uh fluid, you know. Oh man, I'm so glad I have a part a good partner now. Guys, you're going to love Marat, man. The guy's an amazing framer and uh and T-bar guy. It's going to be so great. We're going to have so much awesome content coming. Um, if you guys are into steel stud and drywall and taping and T-bar, this is the channel, the channel that covers all of them all the time. And that's the thing I can do. I can lift these with the lift and on the lift by myself as well. Okay. They're not, they're not huge tops. They're, um, I think they're like six or seven foot tops. Not, not too big. Oh yeah. These are actually eight foot tops. I forgot. Because all those sheets are 10s. Yeah, though. So these are 8-foot tops. But I can still lift them up on the lift. I can do 8-foot tops on the lift my, myself, no problem. But when you're getting into 10s and, 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 or 12s or something, that's a problem. Uh, yeah, and of course, once in a while, you're going to fight with the, uh, the stuff up there. But you can see I got my line laser back on. I'm going to make sure the sheet is level all the way up. And when you're up there doing your tops, man, you 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 screw the whole thing off, okay? Because you don't want to go back to the same spot twice, okay? And uh, what I'm doing, as you can see here, is I'm finding the easy piece, a piece with zero cuts. There's always one piece in the wall that doesn't have any cuts, and that's the one you do first. So that way you can get your side-to-sides off of it uh, for the other tops. Um, I try to use a square as well. I find it just so much faster and cleaner. I can eyeball any of this stuff, guys, but for showing you guys the beginners and stuff like this, how to do it, get used to using your squares, man. One foot, two foot, four foot, whatever, man. Just square everything. You know, you can square across and you can square up and down. Um, going from side to side, not so much, but you see there using my two foot square, that'll that'll square over the top. And then I'm just using my tape to get the side to side, okay? And I've squared over the top. Then I'm making a list, like I'm drawing a diagram of my cuts and I'm cutting, this one I'm cutting right off the lift, uh, which you can do too, right? If it's there accessible or whatnot. Uh, I have other tops 
um, that I just cut on the ground. But either way, I'm only giving like, you know, as minimal space as I need for these uh, openings. Okay. Because generally you want to fire cock them all and you need some sort of backing for that. Okay. Otherwise it's going to have to be taped. Uh, and you, you, you want them as tight as possible. I go within a quarter inch always. Okay. Uh, uh, of a cut. And even here, this top right here, you see, it looks like three pieces, but it's not. I'm going to actually just bend the, like, I'm going to break that piece, but I'm not going to, like, break it in two pieces. This is going to fold and slip into the, uh, the right there. I'm just going to fold it so it fits in between the top hat and the and the cross brace, and then, boom, put it in. And it's beautiful, right? I, do, I, don't, I just have to coat that one time, and it's simple, okay? So... And then with that big uh, pipe, like the big duct as well, I'm measuring with my four foot level. I'm squaring it down and I'm squaring it across. Done, guys. Make sure you guys watch the next video right here. And I hope you guys liked the video. Let me know what you think. And don't forget, if you have any questions whatsoever, please leave them down below, guys. This is Chris from Construction Cronies. Master Construction. Be an industry leader, boys and girls. Love you guys. Peace.